What if Darth Vader found and trained Leia? That's our story for today. Hope you guys enjoy. Stick around to the end where we're going to talk about the story, and I'm just going to mention a few things I've got going on. All right, let's get into it. Our story begins in the Mustafar system in the seas of the moon Nur. In the sea lays the Fortress Inquisitorius, home base of the Imperial Inquisitors, lethal assassins, and hunters that do the bidding of Darth Vader and the Emperor. And on this day, around 10 years after the rise of Darth Vader and the Empire, they hold Princess Leia captive. The third sister, Reva, launched a plan to capture Leia in hopes of luring the great Jedi Master, Obi-Wan Kenobi, out of hiding. And it was working. The Inquisitors had intel that led them to believe that Kenobi would be pursuing the princess. The endgame for Reva was for Vader to also come after Kenobi, giving her a chance to kill Vader. But what she didn't expect was for Vader to act so soon. As Reva was interrogating the young princess, the door behind her swung open, and the breathing of the Dark Lord filled the room. Vader only said, leave us, third sister, and Reva obeyed, knowing what would happen if she did not. Once she was gone, Vader looked down on the young princess. Once he found out she was captured in order to lure out Kenobi, he'd come down here himself. Why was she so important to Kenobi? Vader felt into the Force, searching for fear, but found none. But he did see anger, hatred, sadness, lying deep inside of the young girl. She was strong with the Force. Vader asked who she was, but Leia did not speak. This was no matter, as Vader reached out with his hand to probe her mind, see who she was. Now the young girl spoke, saying that Reva tried this already, and Vader almost laughed. Vader said Reva is nothing compared to him, and he reached into Leia's mind with ease. In seconds, Vader had a strong connection to this girl, and he saw memories. And these memories were equivalent to his nightmares about Padme, back when he was Anakin Skywalker. He saw Padme screaming, Obi-Wan helping her, then Vader saw her living, her life on Alderaan. Time went by, and Vader ended the connection, breathing heavily, in complete shock. This was his daughter, and she would be the perfect apprentice. And now Vader turned his attention to Obi-Wan Kenobi, who would do anything to steal his daughter from him again. Meanwhile, Kenobi was swimming through the sea, coming upon an emergency entrance, and he secretly entered the fortress. Kenobi made his way through, carefully sneaking around, seeing a frozen tomb containing former Jedi, until he heard the screaming of the young Leia. Obi-Wan continued into the room where the screaming could be heard, only to find a recording device set on top of a chair. Kenobi knew immediately he'd fallen into a trap, and from behind him, the sound of three red lightsabers. The Inquisitors were here to kill him. Kenobi figured he could take them, though it would not be easy, and he ignited his blue saber. The Inquisitors charged, and Kenobi used his defensive style to meet them. They fought for a minute, but Kenobi noticed something was off. They weren't trying to kill him. It seemed as if they were trying to wear him down. And that suspicion was confirmed, as Obi-Wan felt himself grow tired, and moments later, he was frozen in place. And he heard the breathing of Darth Vader. Then, the lightsaber ignition. Vader approached Obi-Wan from the shadows, saying he has failed. And with the Force, Vader slammed Obi-Wan from wall to wall, crashing him into machines, breaking him apart. Obi-Wan felt bones in his leg, his shoulder crack, before he was once again frozen in front of Vader. It took everything for Vader not to kill him, but he had a better idea. With the Force, Vader lifted a syringe, plunging it into Kenobi, knocking the Jedi Master out. Some time later, Obi-Wan felt himself wake up, but he was in the worst position possible. Kenobi was stuck inside of the frozen tomb that he passed by on the way in. It was like carbonite, except he was completely aware of everything happening. He simply could not move a muscle. And outside of the tomb, Vader was staring at him. He turned to the Inquisitors, telling them to prepare Kenobi's new tomb for transfer to his castle. Then he turned to speak with the Emperor. Reva told the other two Inquisitors to go ready Vader's ship while she gets the tomb ready for transfer. They obliged, walking away, and while they were gone, Reva pushed a button. The material holding Kenobi slowly melted away, and he fell flat on his face. His shoulder was broken, along with his leg. He could barely move, but Reva helped him up, saying they had to go. Now. She was helping him, hoping that eventually, Kenobi would help her kill Vader. And together, they moved through the fortress, coming upon the emergency exit. But as they did, three lightsabers were ignited behind them, led by Vader. 
He said they will both die here and now. But Reva turned, using a huge force push at Obi-Wan to get him to the exit. She said she would handle this, and Kenobi turned to see her charge Vader. Reva swung, but Vader held her lightsaber in place, then crushed her throat with a quick flick. Reva fell dead, and Obi-Wan knew now that he had to leave Leia. He would find her, but right now, he had to go. He dove through the emergency exit, using his remaining strength to swim to above the water where a speeder was waiting for him. Kenobi was picked up just in time, and he left as Empire TIE Fighters chased them, but the Jedi escaped just in time, without Leia. One year later. Darth Vader looked on at Leia as she trained deep inside of the castle on Mustafar. Vader had secretly had a new area built underground where Leia could train, sleep, and live peacefully with everything she needed. It took a few months for her to actually start training, but Vader learned a few things about manipulation from his own master. He was able to convince Leia that the reason he was in a suit, the reason Leia's mother was dead, was all because of Obi-Wan and the Jedi. Vader said they hide behind a veil of peace while secretly craving power and control. And once Leia firmly believed this, she gave herself to the dark side. She was still young, barely a teenager, but the raw power, the anger, hatred, desire for revenge would set her up to become more powerful than either of the Sith. And on Tatooine, the days all blended together for Obi-Wan. Ever since that horrific day where he lost Leia, Obi-Wan had fallen into a deeper depression. He tried once again to train Luke, but Owen banned him from ever seeing the boy after hearing how he failed to save Leia. So now, Obi-Wan was alone, and for the entire year, he had cut himself off from the Force, wallowing in his failure to save Anakin, and then his failure to save Leia a decade later. Everything he touched seemed to turn bad. His hair was to his shoulders, beard to his chest. He was extremely skinny, and he never slept, because every time he did, all he saw was Anakin, Vader, Leia, failure. Days would go by, weeks, months, and Obi-Wan felt like it was all over. Bale couldn't bear talking to him with Leia gone, he was alone. But one late night, as Obi-Wan tried to sleep, his security alarm began to beep. Kenobi sat up in fear, but a small shadow began to creep in. Obi-Wan sighed, saying, go away, Tika, thinking it was his old Jawa acquaintance. But a different, yet familiar voice responded. The voice said, go away, I will not and Obi-Wan could not believe it. Yoda! Obi-Wan got up, walking over to Yoda and the old Jedi stopped in his tracks. He chuckled, looking at Obi-Wan, saying the Tatooine sons have certainly not been kind. Obi-Wan broke a small smile, the first one in a long time, and then shook his head, saying he failed. Yoda poked his cane around all of Obi-Wan's things, chuckling as dust tumbled off of everything. Yoda remarked that the smell was almost as bad as the Dagobah swamps, and Obi-Wan said, very funny, sarcastically. Eventually, Yoda sat down and got serious, saying that Master Qui-Gon came to him, saying that Obi-Wan has lost his way, and so Yoda was here to help. And Obi-Wan said it's true, but maybe it's for the best. Every time he tries to train someone, protect someone, love someone, they die, fall to the dark side, get captured. He thought of Qui-Gon, Satine, Anakin, Leia, just to name a few the entire Jedi Order, and his eyes became glossy with tears. Yoda realized now just how serious this had become. Obi-Wan really does need help. The two old Jedi friends talked for hours, all the way through the night, about everything. The Jedi, Anakin, Qui-Gon, Leia, Luke, the Empire, Vader, everything. And it helped Obi-Wan to be able to truly talk to someone. By the time morning hit, Yoda convinced Obi-Wan to try again, saying the best teacher failure is. There is still one final hope for the galaxy, Luke Skywalker. And Yoda said that perhaps it's time for him to stay with Obi-Wan, and they will train Luke together. Eventually, Obi-Wan agreed to try once more, and the two Jedi Masters rode through the Dune Sea to find the home of Luke, Owen, and Beru. When Owen opened the door, Yoda asked if they could share a meal together, and the family reluctantly agreed. Over the meal, Yoda took the initiative, explaining that Luke must be trained, but he does not have to be taken away. The Jedi explained that Vader has Leia, and in time, he will discover Leia has a twin. Luke must be ready for when that time comes. Eventually, Owen agreed. Luke was to be trained, so long as he could still see Owen and Beru. 
Luke, Obi-Wan, and Yoda agreed, and the training would begin. And so, over the span of eight long years, Leia Organa and Luke Skywalker began separate journeys to master the Force, each under the guidance of mentors whose influence would shape their destinies in opposite ways. Leia, burdened by the weight and the desire for revenge on Obi-Wan, sought the knowledge of the dark side. Under Darth Vader, her father, she ventured into the shadows of the galaxy in secret. Vader recognizing the extreme power within her, and he became the perfect master to unlock this power. Their teachings were held underneath the Mustafar castle, as Leia learned to harness her anger, channeling it into the power of the dark side. She would go on missions with Vader, and at the age of 19, she was more powerful than any Inquisitor, becoming their leader, though there were only a couple remaining. Leia was powerful, ready to become the Sith Apprentice. On the other side of the galaxy, and the other side of the Force, Luke Skywalker dedicated himself to the Jedi teachings under the eyes of Obi-Wan and Yoda. Guided by the principles of compassion, self-discipline, harmony with the Force, Luke underwent rigorous training on both Tatooine and Dagobah. Luke honed his skills in the light side of the Force as the serene swamps of Dagobah echoed with the whispers of wisdom. As Luke immersed himself in the ancient Jedi ways, learning to wield his lightsaber with grace, connecting with the living force that bound the galaxy together. They were both excellent fighters, but that was second to their strength in the Force. They were as powerful as their father, and the Force flowed through them. As the years passed, the twins' paths diverged further and further. Leia became a shadowy force to be reckoned with, leading covert missions, striking down Jedi or rebel leaders with a cold determination to draw out Kenobi. Meanwhile, Luke, having embraced the Jedi way, emerged as a beacon of hope for the galaxy, quickly becoming a rebel leader as Kenobi helped him join the Alliance. At this time, Yoda passed on, becoming one with the Force. It was his time, as Luke learned everything he could from Yoda, and Obi-Wan was back to his powerful self. Once both Luke and Leia were fully trained and equally powerful, Obi-Wan knew it was time to bring Leia home, find her, before she finds them. And he had a plan. So one day, as Darth Vader sat in his throne, he received a message from Darth Sidious. And Sidious said that the Imperial spies have received intel from Ryloth. There is apparently a Jedi station there, and he wields a purple lightsaber. This shook Vader to his core. Mace Windu lives? Vader told the Emperor that he would track down Windu and kill him once and for all. And Sidious said this was good, ending the call. Darth Sidious was no fool. Vader thought that Leia was a secret, but he knew all about her. He had spies on Mustafar, he had spies everywhere, detailing their every movement, and he was simply waiting for the day that Vader dies to take Leia for himself. While he ran an empire, Vader was training his new apprentice. It was perfect, and he sat back in his chair, checking on the progress of his Death Star. It was still a couple years from being ready, but in time, he would have the Death Star, and he would have a new apprentice. On Mustafar, Vader told Leia that she was to stay here and continue her training. He would be going to Ryloth alone. This meeting was personal. Leia was upset by this, but she obeyed her master, and Vader took off to Ryloth to kill Windu. On Ryloth, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker waited. Over the last few days, they had used Jedi mind tricks to convince local Imperials that a man with a purple lightsaber was here. Obi-Wan knew that this would lead Vader to coming here by himself. This was personal for not just Vader, but Anakin. And he would capture Vader with Luke's help. Over time, the plan was for Leia to try to find her master, only to be reunited with Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan would take a final chance on her. Darth Vader would eventually land on Ryloth, making his way into the abandoned building where the sightings of Mace Windu had been reported. He made his way inside, feeling something strong in the Force, knowing this had to be the place. And Vader made his way into a room where there was a ray shield prison device, and from behind him, Vader heard a familiar lightsaber ignition. Obi-Wan. Vader turned, asking if Windu is actually alive, and Obi-Wan said he is not, saying Vader fell right into his trap. Vader said this death would be just as satisfying then, moving towards Obi-Wan with his lightsaber at the ready. And as Vader moved, he was so distracted with his desire to kill Kenobi that he never felt the other Jedi hiding in the shadows. With a force jump, Luke suddenly flew through the air, slicing Vader's shoulder, causing him to fall over, toppling into a set of boxes. 
Vader got back up quickly, looking around the room and not seeing the two Jedi. His shoulder was sparking and his left arm was barely able to move because of it. And as he looked around, a blue lightsaber emerged from behind him, cutting into his leg, and then another one sliced across his chest. Vader was angry now, and he reached out with the force, grabbing one of the sabered hands, pulling the young boy to him. Vader was breathing heavily, and his suit was giving out, but he would kill these Jedi. He held the boy up, and used the force to throw Obi-Wan through the wall behind him, choking the boy. But as he once saw with Leia, Vader saw Padme now giving birth, and was hit with another realization. He has twins. This was his boy. Vader dropped Luke in shock, and Obi-Wan returned to cut both of his legs off. Vader fell to the ground and was seething with rage. Obi-Wan trained his other child into a Jedi. But a moment later, Vader was knocked out with the Force. Obi-Wan and Luke used the Ray Shield Prison to suspend Vader in the air, where he was alive but broken. Luke looked upon his real father and felt almost nothing. He was evil, broken, defeated. He would just never have a connection to Vader like Leia does. And on Mustafar, Leia could feel that something happened to her master, her father. She could feel his pain in the Force, and Leia knew he was on Ryloth, so she got to her ship and took off to rescue Vader. She was angry at him for going at this all by himself, no matter how personal it was, and now he paid the price, but Leia was determined to save him. And soon enough, Obi-Wan could feel her presence on Ryloth. It was so much different than all those years ago, when he went to rescue her. It was much darker, evil influenced by Vader, but he could still feel that spark of light that always resided in the Skywalker family. Obi-Wan had a plan, and this time, he would do it alone. He told Luke to wait with Vader, and Obi-Wan went to meet Leia. As Leia walked through Ryloth, she could feel Vader was here, but also someone familiar, someone she hated, and Obi-Wan called out to her from nearby, greeting Leia calmly. Leia turned with anger, igniting her lightsaber, staring face to face with Obi-Wan Kenobi, the man that destroyed her father, put him in this suit, and killed her mother. Leia yelled, I hate you, and charged forward at him. Obi-Wan waited, and as Leia swung, he dodged, then spun away, looking at her with calm but sad eyes. Leia yelled at him to fight her, but Obi-Wan said he would not. This made Leia even angrier, so she again charged and swung, but this time, the old Jedi Kenobi ducked underneath the swing, and once again spun away just to face her. Leia yelled at him again, saying that he has taken everything from her, and he has to pay. She asked why he won't fight her, kill her like he did with Padme and Anakin. And Obi-Wan spoke to her, telling Leia to reach out, asking if she truly believes what Vader says. But Leia was not listening. Now, she was just demanding to know where Vader was. Obi-Wan said he would not tell her, and now his plan was fully in motion, as Leia reached out with the Force, trying to probe Obi-Wan's mind. And Obi-Wan let her in, allowing Leia to see her mind. And once Leia was in, Obi-Wan used his powers in the Force to show Leia the truth of that day on Mustafar, an old memory. Obi-Wan showed Leia his memories of Anakin choking and nearly killing Padme, while Obi-Wan tried to help, then showed how Obi-Wan cut down Anakin. Leia broke free of the mind probe, falling to her knees. For the first time, she learned the real truth about her mother, the truth about Obi-Wan, the truth about Vader. It was not Obi-Wan that killed his mother. Obi-Wan Kenobi fell dead, disappearing to the Force. He used all of his strength to show Leia the truth, and now he had to trust in her and the Force that she would take the right path. Down inside of the abandoned room where Luke and Vader were alone, Leia walked in slowly, looking at the two of them. It was her time to make a choice between the light and the dark and she knew what she had to do. Despite the darkness infecting her for nearly a decade, she knew it was all a lie. It was time to leave the past behind, kill it if she has to. And her and the suspended, broken old Vader knew now what was going to happen as Leia drove her lightsaber into Vader's chest, killing the Sith Lord once and for all. For the first time, the Force was perfectly balanced between the two children of the Chosen One. Anakin Skywalker would inadvertently bring balance to the Force with his children, and the two of them united, knowing what must come next. Together, they traveled to Yavin 4, where the Rebel Alliance was, and Leia was reunited with Bail Organa, her real first father. She still carried a great darkness, but uniting with Luke and Bail helped her bring her out of it, and the twins told the Rebel Alliance to be ready. 
the two of them were going to kill the Emperor, and the rebels must blitz the Empire while they are weak. So Bale got into contact with the entire rebellion as the twins took off to Coruscant. The Emperor sat in his office, waiting, feeling into the Force. He could sense the shift in the Force. Young Leia has finally killed Vader, and now she would be coming to him. She would be the perfect Sith apprentice, and so he told his guards to show no resistance when she arrives. And as the Emperor waited, he received a calm from one of the guards. He spoke, saying Leia is not alone. There is a boy with her. And at this point, Sidious was unaware of Luke, but he knew his plan might fall apart when he heard the guard be stabbed and die through the calm. Sidious stood up as the twins walked through the door, one blue lightsaber, one red one ignited and ready. And Sidious could feel now, these were both the children of the Chosen One. It was immediately obvious to Sidious that he would not be getting his new apprentice today. The twins were here to destroy him, and it would be a battle for the fate of the galaxy. As the intense battle unfolded, it became evident that the combined strength and unity of Luke and Leia posed a true challenge to Sidious. The Sith Lord, though powerful, began to show signs of strain as he struggled to fend off the relentless assault from the Skywalker twins. Luke's agile moves, Leia's precise strikes disrupted Sidious's defense. They were beyond powerful. And in a daring move, Luke lunged forward, pushing Sidious, forcing him to retreat. Sensing an opportunity, Leia capitalized on the moment, delivering a series of rapid strikes, pushing the Sith Lord to the edge as he tried to hit her with lightning. The room reverberated with the clash of lightsabers, the hum of the Force, as Sidious desperately attempted to regain control. But it was no use. These were the newly united twins of the Chosen One. And in a final, decisive moment, Luke and Leia synchronized their attack, overwhelming Sidious, pushing him to his knees. The red glow of his lightsaber flickered, then extinguished as Leia's blade hovered inches from the defeated Sith Lord's neck. The once formidable Darth Sidious, architect of the Empire, now found himself at the mercy of the Skywalker twins. He attempted to speak, to manipulate them against each other, as he always had with Anakin, but Leia's red blade cut off his head. The Emperor was dead. From here, the Rebel Alliance would pour into the galaxy over the next handful of months. Luke and Leia would lead assaults as the Empire crumbled from within, with so many people trying to gain control of it. Once the head of the snake was dead, it was only a matter of time until the Empire fell. When it was all said and done, Luke and Leia were the heroes of the New Republic, and every day, Leia remembered the final sacrifice of Obi-Wan, showing her the light, and she and Luke would rebuild their own Jedi Order. And folks, that's where our story ends today. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Quick announcement, I did create a Patreon account yesterday. It'll be linked in the description. No pressure at all, there's just a few tiers in there. You can check out the perks. It'd be, you know, great help of course, but you're all great just for watching and subscribing. Anyways, let's talk about today's story. I always kind of struggle with the training ones, like what if this person trained this person? Just because it's, I don't, you know, I'm just not my best style. I'm better at like altering events that happen in time. I don't know, but I did enjoy this one a lot, having Leia go dark and Maybe it's controversial the way Vader was killed off, he may have seemed kind of weak, but he didn't know Luke was going to be there. Luke was very powerful, having trained for 8 years at that point, and Vader was so hell-bent on killing Obi-Wan, finally, that he just didn't sense Luke, and the two of them were able to take him down, as Vader, in the end, sensed that Luke was his child. So, I thought it was good, we didn't need a super long, drawn-out fight, I didn't think it made a ton of sense, and then, having Leia turn... Well, her motivation, right, for turning to the dark side in this story was Vader convincing her that Obi-Wan and the Jedi were evil, when in fact it was Vader who, you know, basically killed Padme. So having Obi-Wan be able to show her that through a mind probe, the same mind probe that Vader did at the beginning of our story, I thought that was a good way to kind of cap it off, have Leia realize the truth, and go back to Obi-Wan who she knew at the beginning of our story. So, hope you guys enjoyed that part. Maybe a bit controversial to have her go back to the light, but that's how I wanted to do this one with Luke and Leia, kind of uniting as perfectly balanced twins in the Force, killing Sidious. So, let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.